So search engine optimization, modern search engine optimization, really is about um, creating content that is useful to both people and the search engines, but more for people. Older search engine optimization was about creating a website that was optimized for the search engines, for the machines. But then that would create websites that maybe read very artificially, that were kind of um, very wordy but not saying much. So nowadays the search engines basically say optimize for people, not for machines, not for the search engines. So we want to create content that people want to read. People want to read and share. That's the social media aspect. So I want people to come to my site to be able to read something that they care about, to be able to find something that they care about on my blog and share it. And so we've talked in here in the sharing settings. You know, we can kind of say check. We've dealt with some of the sharing issues. People can now share and I can publicize and that sort of thing. And I'm going to then write about uh, next time that I am, then I'm going to write a, a blog, an, op, a, an optimized blog post. Uh, but one of the things, what I was saying right now was about finding your content. People finding your content. If we focus on people, then the search engines will follow. So one way for people and search engines to find your content is to organize your content. So now let's take a moment over here under posts. If you hover over posts, we have tags and categories. Let's take a moment to look at those sections. So hover your mouse over posts and let's start first with categories. Like we took the time to brainstorm ideas last time about what to write about, we should take some time to write, to organize what we're going to write about. So I'm going to use the fictional company again, Victor's Bakery. And I'm going to be writing about, um, I think I said the, the cake of the month, and then the employee of the quarter, uh, the recipe of the week. Those are my big three ideas that I could be blogging about. I want to organize those ideas into categories. I can have as many categories as I want and I can actually attach as many categories as I want per post. Although it behooves you to uh, choose between one and three categories per post. You don't want to overload the categories, uh, the amount of categories per post. So this screen allows us to create or delete or edit categories. Um, categories, unlike tags, can also have a hierarchy. I'll see what that means in a moment. But so, like I said, I've already, I already know I'm going to be writing about the cake of the month and so forth. So that could be a particular category. Question? Can I just make a, a book? A category? You could, but I, I, I don't quite Sorry. recommend something so generic. Huh? I wouldn't make something so generic as just book. Is it a book review? Yeah, I'm saying um, one of the books I want to review is called uh, Fast Mind mm -hmm. So can I make Fast Mind a category? No, no, because only one thing will exist in that category, that one book. That's not the point of a category. Perhaps is that a self-help self -help book? Is it a nonfiction? Is it fiction? Think about it in those terms. What what could that book and others like it fit into? So that's a better category to think about. So this category that I might create is Cake of the Month. So I'm going to write Cake of the Month. Notice it's got capital letters and spaces and all of that readable for people. I'm not thinking about it in terms of the machine that it's lower cases with dashes and all of that. This is for people. WordPress will add that for me. I'm writing this for regular people. I could add a description, but the description is um, dependent on the theme. A theme it may show a category or may not. But it is a good idea to also write a simple sentence about what that theme is in a description because, again, content. The search engines care about the content of your site. Therefore, as the more we write, the more the search engines can help us be found. And then, of course, the users will have more. Uh, 
uh, help in fighting what they care about. When someone searches in the search box in my WordPress site and I'm properly filled out content, it makes it easier for my stuff to get found. So Cake of the Month will be a monthly look at a great cake from Grandma Maria. Click Add New Category. And then on the right side now it shows I've got a new category, Cake of the Month, and its description. And the slug is just the, the term for the, the address, basically. Notice it automatically put it lowercase with dashes and so forth. The user really won't see that. The search engines will. What the user will see is the one we wrote here. So if we wrote this sloppily with lower cases and not like a real kind of sentence, then that'll turn off the users. Let's say I'm going to back up a little bit uh, because I may be not only writing about cake of the month, but I've also got employee of the quarter, so that could be a category. But let's say I'm going to be writing about something that could fit in category in cake of the month and employee of the quarter. Let's say that in both of those, for both of those categories, I can write a blog post that would fit in both uh, because maybe the cake of this month is going to be some kind of chocolate cake and the employee of the quarter uh, her favorite kind of uh, sweet is chocolate so I could have a category chocolate that will then fit if I create something in cake of the month because I could have a chocolate cake and then also if I write the the uh, employee of the quarter and the and the cook Janet says her favorite types of recipes are chocolate based do you see that I can that blog post can be fit into that category so you can be as generic or specific as you want the categories help organize your site the categories are great when people search inside of your site the categories help you outside of your site in a in a in a google search in a bing search etc can you have too many categories? You can have too many categories uh, if you're not really using them. So if you've got you know 20 categories, but you really only use seven, and you've got all of those left over, they're not really serving you very much because there's no content in those categories. If you have a lot of categories and you really only have one thing in each category, that's not very helpful either. So you want to have a good amount of content in each category so that it's not an empty or unused category. Now, here's a question. I have two categories. One's gems and history, and the other one's historical jewelry. Mm -hmm. They're both kind of related. Should they have been combined, or do they remain separated based on someone's search engine ops, you know, how they... I sort of think that the category that could be combined into is just history, because you could be writing... Well, what were them? What were they again? Gems and history gems or and historical history. jewelry. Yeah, Gems so. History is more flavorful. Okay. Historical jewelry is dry. Is someone typing in historical jewelry? Or are they typing in gems? Does it matter? Well, gems, later on we'll talk about tags. We would use tags in conjunction to this. We want to think about what kind of categories can we create where we can fit as much content into, and then we'll fine tune it with tags. So, what's the name of the chapter? The category you yeah. think of the name of the chapter. That's a way. So a category could be a chapter, and then the actual tag is like a paragraph, sort okay, of. So I need to have one, one, two. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. And if you want to remove categories, all you have to do is hover over the category on the side here and select delete. Notice we cannot delete the uncategorized category. But you can hover over an existing category and edit it, delete it, view it would show us all of the posts that have been attached to that category. Notice at the moment I've got zero. I can see all seven pages that are in this category once I've got them tagged, once I've got them categorized. So that thing that says para and then it says mirror under that, that was to make a hierarchy? What's an example? Okay, let's say I have a category of cakes. This works a little bit better for like an e-commerce site. 
Let's say I've got cakes, and then I create chocolate cake, and select that the parent is cakes. So now it's indented and it shows that chocolate cake, its parent category is cake. So I could also have you know, vanilla cake, or let's say sponge cake. as part of the cake category. That's just more organization, making it easier for people to find what they want. And that's why we might want to use parents and child categories. And there's a note at the bottom. Deleting a category does not delete the posts in that category. Instead, posts that were only assigned to the deleted category are set to the uncategorized. That's why you can't delete uncategorized. So if you want to delete all seven of those posts that are no longer relevant, you don't delete a category. We have to go over to the posts screen and delete them. And we'll, we'll see that later, but this is just showing you. Deleting a category does not delete the posts in the category. It just uncategorizes them. So um, that's something that I would ask you to continue to think about. I'm going to move on, but categories are the super units of organization. Think about it as in terms of filing cabinets. This filing cabinet is for a particular client, and this one is for another client. Within that filing cabinet, then I have manila folders for specific things, like here's the social media stuff of this client in this cabinet. Here's the billing stuff, the billing documents of this in this manila folder in this uh, filing cabinet. And what I'm getting at is that the categories are the large units of organization, and then tags are the fine-tuned ones, the more specific units of organization. So let's go over to tags. This is very similar. Add a tag, describe it. This one, though, you might not really want to populate it much until you actually start to write. Because I can sort of think in general terms for categories and have ideas of what to write about. But as I start to write, I'm going to see, okay, I want to use this tag, this keyword for this post. Like, um, you know, sugar-free. Maybe I don't want to create a whole category for that. I don't have a lot of posts that I could categorize, but I want to use sugar-free in this recipe. So I don't, I don't usually create tags that early, I do create categories though. And I, and I can create tags when I want to, uh, for example, as I'm writing the post. I can easily create tags then. So I'm not going to add any tags yet, but again this is another way to organize. So the, the category is the larger unit, cakes. And then I'm going to have some tags later, perhaps sugar-free, vegan, Etc. And they kind of sort of sound like they interact, interchange a little bit, but I would say that with categories you want to have between one and three, and for tags I would do about three to five categories. Three to five per post? I'm sorry, tags. Per post, yeah. Three to five tags per post? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three categories per post? Three to five tags per post, and one to, five, one to three categories per post. One might be all that you need. Maybe this cat, this post falls into another category. Fine, but I would keep it under three. As with tags, well, uh, in this case it is, a little, it is a little bit more about more is better, but then of course too much is too much, so that's why three to five tags per post. Question? Um, are those numbers you recommend, is that for SEO purposes or just so that we can have a, a simpler like a it's both. Having a streamlined website where the user can find what they want, navigate it, and so forth, in the long term helps our SEO because, again, the search engines say, you know, design or optimize for users, not for the search engines. So it, it helps both, though, because then the search engines, when they analyze your site completely, they will see everything about it and they will see all of your categories and tags. 
and therefore better are better able to serve your site when someone searches those keywords. And it also helps the user because then they're not lost or they can find their content and they can share your content and have a good experience. If you were to have posts um, where using more than five tags of D7, do you think that would hurt the SEO at all or if the tags are applicable? I have to look up exactly what the latest standards say, but from what I remember reading, uh, they've said, I believe, like the first five or so tags are the ones that take the most rel the most precedence, and then at a certain point, the search engine just ignores them. So I don't know what the number is at the moment. I'd have to look it up. That's why I'm saying three to five tags would be a good amount for people in the search engine, because if you've got 12, maybe it's not being as useful to you because the search engine is ignoring some of them. Yes. So I'm not quite sure if I understand when you want something to be a category versus a tag. I would do the categories like my ideas of what, like I said, the cake of the month, the the spotlight of the the employee spotlight of the quarter, the recipe of the week, so I can fit a variety of content into those two, into those three main sections, and then in the cake of the month, I might be. Uh, posting about a chocolate cake or a sponge cake or a vanilla cake or a vegan cake so then those would be categories all of those are part of the cake of the month but then I'm specifying details of a post with tags so would chocolate be a tag or a category? it could it could be either but let's get some 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 more opinions here so I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up here um, when to use tag versus um, category in WordPress. Say that again? Is it a category if somebody does a search within your web page, whereas a tag would be for a search engine if somebody just goes to like Google? They could both be at the for those both reasons someone searching within your site or someone searching outside of your site let me see what it says here at, at WordPress support um, uh, once upon a time WordPress only had categories categories allowed for broad grouping of topics but when you wanted to describe a post in more specific terms categ more categories are required this led to very long category lists inside the blog and very long long very long list inside the widget so we have tags also. Tags are similar to categories, but they are generally used to describe your post in more detail. So let's say you're about to post a recipe for brownies. On your food blog, you probably want to use categories like dessert and baking, and tags like chocolate, brownies, walnuts. So this particular recipe is going to fall into the larger category of a dessert, and that it's baking or even recipe. But then this one is specifically a chocolate recipe, a brownie recipe, and it includes walnuts. So we have the larger categories and then the more fine-tuned tags. And notice the way it might show up in the in the site, depending on the on the on the theme. You'll have the post, and it might say posted in this category or tagged with this. So then a user can click on brownies and show me everything that is tagged brownies or click on dessert and show me all posts that have been categorized under dessert. So the, the larger concept and the more detailed concept. So perhaps for me, if I had chocolate as a category, maybe it's not the best. Chocolate might work better as a, as a tag. I have cake. I have chocolate cake. Well, how many different types of chocolate cake can there be? A lot. So that can fit under that. Do I have to use tags? It's optional. Are categories and tags hierarchical? Is a tag the same as a tag? Yes, capital letters. Do not change a tag. And that's a legitimate question because sometimes things are case sensitive, actually, in computers. So it's a good thing that it doesn't matter capital letters or not. Is there a limit to the number of tags? Yes, the sky. In other words, no. So you can have as many tags as you want, but for SEO, you might not want to have lots and lots of tags. Your posts will appear in the topics listing if any tags or categories are in use. Therefore, assigning tags and categories to your post increases the chance 
that other WordPress.com users will see your content. So again, being found by people if you properly organize. However, you don't want irrelevant content. Uh, 5 to 15 tags or categories or a combination of the two is a good number for each of your posts. The more tags you use, the less likely is that your post will be selected for inclusion in the topic list. All right, so there it says between 5 and 15, but that's counting both categories and tags. So if we, do, if we do 1 to 3 categories and 3 to 5, so 3 and 5, 8, um, and they say up to 15. All right, so I can always edit my categories, and I can always add to tags or delete them and, and so forth. Any questions on tags and categories before we go on? All right, let's look at another aspect of your site. This is a little bit more toward the user experience, uh, people being able to manage or to navigate your site and find the content that they want. This is the, the themes. So we've been in the dashboard the whole time. The dashboard, also known in the business, the, the back end. We've been behind the scenes, the settings, and there's still other things to look at. I want to see what does this look like to people. A while ago, I chose a theme, and I don't even remember what it looks like. So I want to see the front end. I want to see what it looks like for people visiting my site. So here in WordPress.com, we're going to get in the habit of going to the very, very top left. You hover over where it says My Site and click View Site right there. We're in the dashboard. We're in the admin area. Let's switch to, visit, to View Site to see it like a, a regular user. There it is. I had a very basic Eden theme. So it's black and white. There's some text at the top there. There's my first post. Branding at the bottom. Very basic. Yours might look different than mine because it asked you to pick a theme. Can you change your theme for the design? Yes, that's what we're going to do right now because I'm kind of bored with my theme. So yeah. let's change. Let's change themes. Let's. I'm just saying we're going to get used to. Okay, we're in the front end. We want to go to the back end. Same thing. You hover over my site and now select WP Admin. Notice it doesn't say dashboard. So switch to the back end to the dashboard. Back to the dashboard. So that's how we're gonna we're gonna do. We're gonna switch back and forth the back end, the front end, the dashboard, WP Admin view site. So when I say let's do this and then visit site, that means switch to the front end. And we control our site here in the dashboard, and what I want to control, what I want to change is the theme. The theme. So what we'll do is we'll hover over um, appearance. Do you see appearance there? Hover over appearance and select themes. So here's a variety of other themes. They have different names, Snaps, Obsidian, Romero. And you might notice that some of them are not free. This one's $49. It says Purchase. This one up here, Snaps, doesn't have any price. I can just activate it with one click of the button. Yes? If somebody actually wanted to make themes, how would they do that? Is it just it's a bit of a process in that you have to create an account at wordpress.org and then design the theme with the right code, which is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP, and then go through the submittal process and submit your theme to the WordPress directory. And then you could appear here. 
So this is free for people to create a theme and publish it either for free or for pay. Mm -hmm. So maybe the best looking ones, unfortunately, are for pay. This one's $99, Romero. This one's only 49 Atlas. And there's lots of them. This one says at the top, 360. So we have trending, popular, and newest. And on the right it's saying, show me all themes, or only free themes, or only paid themes, premium themes. Uh, if I go look at newest, so we have Argent, Hunt, Gateway, Demand, etc., Canard. I'm going to say, show me the newest free themes. Maybe I don't want to pay for one at the moment. So I know this. Um, there are a lot of different formats. This is sort of like PowerPoint where you pick a theme, but once you do that, you have some autonomy over the list of things. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, these themes are going to. The look of it. Exactly. You're going to have. You're going to define the look, the look and feel of your site, and you still will have the ability to place content how you want to some degree. So unfortunately, though, it's not as open-ended as PowerPoint, where you can then start with a theme or a template and change it exactly how you want. This does have some limitations here and there because it's rather complicated. Depending on the theme author, notice here under Appearance, we have Themes and Customize. Depending on the theme author, you may have a lot of customization options or not. So that's a, a phrase that I often say in these classes, depending on the theme depending on your theme. People ask a question, I often have to say, depending on your theme, you might be able to do this or that. So let's say you like any other theme. I want to work with snaps. So if you hover over any theme, you should see theme details, which you can click and read, and it tells you about the theme a little bit. This was made by Graph Paper Press. Anyway, you can hover over a theme, you can preview it, get a larger version of it, It tries to take my content and add it to that particular theme. It might not look exactly like the thumbnail because I might not have set some of the properties of the theme exactly like that demo. This is always annoying for people that start off with WordPress. We see these great themes designed perfectly and beautifully, then we activate it, and it, ours doesn't look exactly the same. That's just like when you look at those uh, when you look at food in an advertisement, they look so juicy, that hamburger, that, that chicken looks glistening and perfectly cooked, and then you order it at the, at the fast food joint and it's like smashed and it's uh, tilted and all of that. Well, to make it look exactly like the demo that we're seeing here, you probably have to edit some of these settings a bit. Question? Um, yeah, I'm looking at a theme called Gateway and it has some mountains across the top, which are mountains. But then it looks like it probably has a, a like the, the categories or something down the side. But then when I click on the preview, I don't, I don't see that anymore. All I see is the thing across the top. Depending on the theme, some of these features might be active right away, or you might have to tweak some of the settings because do you notice if you click preview? Uh, it shows you on the left some of these things to edit. So probably you'll have to go in and edit some yeah. of these a little bit so for it in order to show just up. Came from, they had this stuff down the side, right? But which I wanted to look at and see what it was because it was too small for me to see. Mm -hmm. So now how do I see it? See what, what it was they were putting on the side. So these options right here on the side most likely you're going to have to tweak them a little bit to make it look exactly like the demo. So unfortunately, sometimes it's you don't get what you see exactly. You have to go in and maybe change this option or change that option or change some option. So they're always going to show you the best foot forward. These little thumbnails are always going to look perfect. And then you're going to have to go in and change some of those settings a bit under Customize. Okay. 
So whatever theme you like, uh, go ahead and activate it. See, there's the gateway thing, and here's this orange stuff down the side. Is, is that the same thing that was over on the other side? Mm -hmm. It was over on the left hand side? So I'm going to activate any theme that you like, activate it, and you might then get the option customize it. That's where you're going to go, most likely, to activate something that's that's missing, or if it doesn't look exactly like the thumbnail, but then you're going to have to notice it says here, discover your theme's awesome features, have questions, stop by tech support, or go further with a custom design upgrade, which that's a code word for paid. I don't have to pay for that. Upgrade. Custom. Upgrade. 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 Mm -hmm. So if I do select to customize, it'll take me to this side screen over here where I can try to set some of these options. Sidebar. Oh, so they now, now it's bigger. I can see it. It's, it's uh, an archive list that has all the different months. So yeah. those categories, all each month, they like their, their blogs for November and October? They kind of, uh, in a sense, behave like categories, but technically they're not. This is just something built in that WordPress automatically keeps track of. Whenever you post something, it keeps track of the month. So then we can set it to show those months automatically on the blog. And that's probably what it's showing in the thumbnail. Yeah, that's right. So this is going to vary depending on everyone's theme. Uh, choose whatever theme and then select to customize it. If you don't see the same customized screen like I do, uh, the way to get to that screen is after you've activated the theme, then under Appearance, select Customize. And then depending on the theme authors, they will give you more or less options here than what I see. So if you don't see exactly what I have there, don't worry. Browse around those options and see what you can find. This is the good thing and the bad thing about WordPress themes. The good thing is that there's so many of them out there that you could find the perfect theme for your site. The bad thing is that you'll probably have to spend some amount of time tweaking it to look exactly like what you envision. Or tweaking it enough so that it doesn't look like someone else's site. Because if you found this perfect site here, this perfect theme, and activated it, so did a thousand other people globally. So you might want to go in and not leave it as is, customize it a bit. Maybe you'll never run into someone else's website that looks exactly as yours. Or maybe someone else won't ever run into your site that looks like exactly the one that they've seen a year ago. But it is a good idea to see what customization you have and try to make it yours. Another sort of negative is maybe I like the theme, but I would really like for this color to be orange or uh, pink instead of orange. But I don't see any option here to change my text, let's say. You're kind of stuck with that because the theme author didn't give you that option to customize. You're also stuck because you don't have the feature of a self-hosted WordPress. Remember I said we've got self-hosted and we've got WordPress hosted. The WordPress hosted one is totally free, has a lot of great features, but is limited here and there to a couple of things. If instead you buy your provider at Bluehost and set up your WordPress there, you have no restrictions at all. And what I'm getting at is if you have any experience with HTML code, if you've got a self-hosted WordPress, you can edit that code. If you have just the WordPress.com, you don't even have the option to edit that code. Because WordPress.com doesn't want you to pull back the curtain and see all of the code like the matrix and break your site. They don't want to tech support that. So some features are not active on WordPress.com. But all the features are active if you go buy space on HostMonster and activate WordPress there. That's why it's self-hosted. You yourself take care of everything. You yourself deal with it when you break your site. So the, it's like this one that we're looking at, the gateway site. Is there a way for me to customize it by putting my own photograph up there in the header where they have their, you know, their mountains in the, in the header with my own? You know, like the one that's, if you're looking at Baker's Bakery and there's this uh, landscape behind it, can you put your own landscape in behind there? Can you customize it to do your own photograph? 
you'll have to tell me because you will go in and you will check out these options right here and maybe you will find a spot where you can change it. And what, what I mean by that is that I don't know how every theme works. So then it's up to you um, to choose a theme and maybe browse around here somewhere. You might find a spot where that is editable. Well, so I clicked on header and then it said, well, you can crop images to, to your liking. And your theme recommends a hair size of like that. Mm -hmm. So I can crop it apparently, but and then and then it has a button that says add new image. Mm -hmm. So I could that makes it some like I could add my own photograph there. And it does, so you might try it because that's what it seems to, to do. So this particular theme seemed to have the ability to customize that graphic, which is good because then I don't want it to look like everyone else's. You can also look at something here. Uh, right now, my screen is being shown for desktop, for, for laptop or desktop users. I can then activate the button down at the bottom here. This one looks like a tablet. Click on that, and it shrinks the screen a little bit like on someone's tablet. So what we have here is what's known as a responsive theme. In the world of web design, responsive web design is the current trend in web design, which is that your site will look good on a desktop computer, it'll look good on a tablet computer, and it'll look good on a mobile phone, mobile device. Notice if I select mobile, it shrinks down like that. It looks nice. If you don't have a responsive theme, then if you preview it on the, on the phone size, and you don't have responsive, it'll probably cut off 90% of the screen. It'll look awkward. You've probably run into websites like that on your phone. You visit a website, and you go to it, and suddenly the text is tiny, and you have to zoom in. That means that website is not mobile friendly. It doesn't use responsive web design. It's not a good site. And SEO wise, you want a website that is responsive. Google specifically says we're going to give more preference, more precedence to websites that are mobile friendly. So that means all you have to do is find a theme that is mobile friendly, that is that uses responsive web design. And the good news is that most modern WordPress themes are already responsive. You can fully confirm that by when you're browsing for a theme, you check theme details, and probably somewhere it'll mention right here, responsive. So as you browse the themes, click on theme details and look around in here. Obsidian theme, like the naturally occurring volcanic glass, blah, blah, blah. blah. Blah, tags, right sidebar, right here, responsive layout. If your theme does not mention responsive anywhere, it might not be responsive and therefore it might hurt you to use that theme, SEO-wise. That is something that has been mentioned by the search engine, specifically Google at the moment. If your website is not responsive, that might hurt you. Because statistics are showing more and more and more people are using mobile devices, tablets or cell phones. And so if your if your website doesn't look good on this device, Google is going to think that you Google is going to let me finish my thought. Google is going to say that your website is not modern and therefore they're not going to rank you well. Question. Question. Never Okay. Sorry. So this is our exploration on themes. There's many, many to choose from, and you'll probably find your perfect theme. You'll have to tweak it a bit. Question? Usually, like, uh, like, uh, you're saying, like, the headers, uh -huh. um, you know, like, the headers, like, the headers, particularly, not the title, but the header itself, like, underneath the title. Does that, like, have to have, like, uh, punctuation, is it, or is it not required? This one here? Yeah, like, right here. It should have punctuation and it should look like a human readable sentence. Okay. But not like, you know, you put like, uh, like areas at the end of the, uh, like say you want to like the sentence, would you end it with the, you know, punctuation mark that you know? Either or, if it needs an exclamation point because your tagline has an exclamation point, you should use it. Um, punctuation wise with just like a regular period um, I don't believe it's necessary and it might just be for aesthetic purposes it might look a little awkward to put the period without the period it looks 
nicer, but I don't believe it's going to affect your SEO because the content itself, the search engines will be able to understand. And then for your user, they will look at it and it'll look good for the user. That's what I was always wondering, Jeff, if you like notice like um if you were like even not just in blogging but like also like on YouTube and stuff like that. It's like something that I always question, like do I put it there, you know, will it affect the um, the SEO? For example, in YouTube, we have the title of the video, and there I hardly ever see periods. I might see exclamation points and dashes and such as necessary. But definitely in the description of the YouTube video, I will write complete sentences with punctuation and so forth. Yeah. In this particular case, I think it's either either way, and just aesthetically, I don't, I'm not going to put it because I don't think it really looks that good, and it's not really going to affect my SEO. So in the title, say for example, for um, the title of uh, if your blog is like what you call uh, let's say uh, a phrase or mm -hmm. something of this nature, you know, or it can be fragmented as well. But like if it's like long, long mm -hmm. in a sense, then is it required then to go ahead and punctuate it or just to, to leave it out the way? Well, if it's a if it's a long sentence, like you know, we really have a long slogan here that does need the commas and so forth. I, I would add that because again, that's for the readability of people. So I would add that, uh, but then I would question how long is too long. If you really need a long tagline, there you might have to reevaluate it because a tagline really, you know, it's going to explain what the site is about, but it's not going to over-explain it because you're going to run into these issues of visually, it's too much content, it's too noisy. It might be too annoying to read, and and the search engines do take some of that into account. The 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 aesthetics of the site, the construction of your site. So I would be I would keep it shorter is better. Enough of my words here and keywords and concepts are visible here to tell people what the site is about and the search engines. Now, because we've got the WordPress hosted site, we are missing a feature here. We are missing search. If you have a if you have self hosted, you then actually have access to even more themes, not just to the, these 360. You also have access to you could, for example, do a search for um, best bakery WordPress themes. And then I'm going to see here this website, this blog, that is saying, here's the 20 best WordPress themes for bakeries and coffee shops. So I'm finding these themes. Notice the date also. Let me go back. Notice the date, January 24th, January 2nd. These have been added pretty recently. Again, this is the point of having a blog, May 20th. This is the point of having the blog. This is the point of getting found on Google, on Bing, on Yahoo. You're posting content on a regular basis, and notice the newer stuff is being is being shown than the stuff from a year ago. So right here we're seeing in action one of the reasons to blog. Look at all of these results. These are all blog posts. Well, not Pinterest here, but these are all blog posts basically. And look at how current they are. What does it tell you if there's no date? This one doesn't have a date here because it seems to be like a review site with a star rating. It's going to depend on the site. Let's see another one without a rating. Uh, bakery templates and themes from Theme Forest. These guys, I know that Theme Forest is like one of the largest themes to uh, one of the largest websites to find a variety of themes. So they don't have a date because they're not a blog. They're like a they're like a marketplace to buy themes. So for them, they don't have a date. Um, Twenty two of the best bakery and restaurant themes at Pinterest. Again, Pinterest is a social network. It's always being updated, so there's no date there. But anyway, what I'm getting at is, let's say I found that blog post. I like. I look at these 20. I find the perfect one, the one called Cafeteria. I want to use that on my site. Unfortunately, we cannot use it on your WordPress.com site. It has that limitation. It's got these 360 to choose from. It doesn't let you use these other ones out on the rest of the web, 
because you have the WordPress hosted site, there's some limitations. They don't want to tech support a theme from some other company that is not connected. There's, other, there's some other things that are deactivated as well, like plugins. Plugins are little mini apps that add more features to your site, such as e-commerce. I want to sell products on my site. Or maybe I want a chat feature to answer people's questions live. That would be a plugin. There's no plugin category here. There is if you've got self-hosted. You install one of these third-party plugins, one of these mini apps, on your self-hosted, and then you deal with the tech support. WordPress.com doesn't. That's why I can't reach out to the rest of the world and find the perfect theme. Um, because I've got self-hosted. Um, because I've got WordPress hosted. Honestly, because I, I don't buy them from there, I'm not sure, but I feel that they're one time. We'd have to look it up. Don't quote me on that, but I believe they're one time. Um, but for those prices, usually you get a lot of good features. What's a good price? The good price, the best price is the one that makes your best website. So if you paid $45, $25, and it does what you want, you pay the right price. If you have to go and buy one that's $100, but it works on your site and it increases your revenue and all of that, then that was worth it. Uh, for our clients, the way we do it is we, of course, set them up with a self-hosted site. And then we go over with the client to themeforest.com and browse one of the best places on the web to find a premium theme. And these range between $40 and $60. We find their perfect theme and then we customize it further via editing code and that sort of thing and make for them a site based on an existing theme that is fully customized for them. And the prices vary, they're pretty affordable. Like I just saw one for $16, $48 there, and $58 here, and $19 there. So within WordPress.com, as best as you can, you want, with a premium theme like this $99 one, you want to preview it, you want to read about it, you want to see why is it so great. And if it does what you need it to do, then invest in it. If you don't, if it doesn't do what you want, then keep searching or, um, as I recommend later, get service at a provider where you have the full features to go over to ThemeForest, for example, and find even more themes. I'll get back to word uh, to theme forest again next time, but we're going to end the main lecture in just a moment. I'll have a little bit of lab time. Before we leave, before I take your question, what I want you to do is when we come back next time, okay, we've done some of this foundational stuff. When we come back next time, I'm going to give you a handout with a bunch of bullet points for a great blog post. And then we'll start to write it together and I'll tell you pitfalls and advice and all of that. In order for you to do that, make sure that you have your login to get back into this. Make sure you have, you wrote it down somewhere or you memorize it, what was my login for WordPress. Because when we come back next time, when we come back next time, we're going to go back to WordPress.com and then it's at the top right, log in. And you're going to log in with the email or username you use to create the account and your password. So whatever it is, make sure you wrote it down or you can retrieve it because next time we're going to log in and, and work. We've done the foundational stuff. Now we need to actually write next time. So basically homework is um, finding a theme not even that. You can keep the same boring theme if you want, because next time I'm going to focus on the writing part. Because again, content. Content is king. Content is what the search engines care about. So we'll take any final general questions, and then we'll do lab. Any general questions? 
maybe write them down or think about them, and next time we'll answer them. But uh, again, next time we'll come back. We'll have I'll have a handout for you, bullet points. We'll actually write and so forth. So uh, this day and next time is about WordPress, and then after that, the last day will be about Tumblr. So once you've gotten some uh, WordPress down, then we'll we'll look at Tumblr. Uh, so remember, send me an email for the videos. And we'll do it again next time.